Hi, hey everybody, hey, hey, hey. Y'all, this is live from the 815. How are y'all doing today? How are y'all doing up and down for the young? <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, let okay, me just sort so, my. Uh... How you doing? I am good. That is how you doing? <laughs> All right, so I'm about to start with the chicken. I got my chicken thighs that are already cleaned and I already cut the fat off of them. So we're going to be doing the tropical citrus chicken strips today. And we're going to toss them in a nice, wonderful butter sauce. And then we're also going to do the garlic parmesan potato wedges, y'all. So, hey. Wow. All right, hey. and we also have Cass here. Hi. Make sure y'all say hey to the newest member right here and then say hey to Cass. How are y'all doing today? Happy Friday. Hey, everybody. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get into seasoning my chicken. As you see Let's here, do it. I you guys are watching Food Talk TV. This is in uh, live from the 815 with Vicki Brown. Yes, it is. And you know, it's about to get real live up in here tonight, y'all. So like I said, you know, it's Friday. It's a good 92 degrees, 93 degrees outside today. And that's not including the heat index. So I can imagine nobody wants to be in the kitchen for a long time tonight, right? So with that being said, it's always great to have a nice, easy go-to meal that you can have. And this is going to be one of those. I got the kids. They back there playing Madden in the background. So excuse if you hear any hollering or yelling. They're playing Madden. And I hope they're uh, practicing because I'm about to get on those sticks next and see if I can go ahead and whoop them too. Whoop both of them. <laughs> so they'll have a reason to be hollering, right, y'all? You, you know what? I just saw a YouTube video where somebody was uh, uh, was looking at or found out they're making a movie called Madden. They didn't realize that uh, Madden was a real person. Oh, yes, he was. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he was actually he was a pretty decent coach, you know, and actually football player. So, yeah, he's yeah, he was the real thing, y'all. <laughs> that's 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 where the game come from. Actually, they're de they dedicated um, the new Madden to him. So if you play the new Madden, you will see a lot of stuff about him. So I got my chicken thighs. They are clean and all the fat is cut off them. Hey, Andrea, how you doing, beautiful? Happy Friday to you as well. All right, so I'm going to have to go ahead and start with my seasonings. Like I said, y'all, you got the kids. It's 93 degrees where I'm at right here, and this is this is heat, heat. So um, this is an easy, a quick, and simple meal. We're going to start off with our Saison Tropical. This right here is going is packed with a lot of flavor. It is packed with citrus. It is packed with Cajun. It has a lot of good flavors in there. I definitely suggest it for barbecue as well. Okay. It brings a great flavor if you add this and do some chili lime seasoning with salt and pepper. That alone, you don't even need anything else. <laughs> you said we don't get that in the UK. You said what now? We don't get that seasoning in the UK that looks lush. You know what? Amazon. It looks great. Order it from, it looks Am great. Order it from Amazon. Wow. <laughs> It also gives your chicken a beautiful flavor. So it has like this beautiful, like orangish red flavor uh, tint to it. It gives it a beautiful color. Did I say flavor? I mean color. Yes. Hey, Haas. Thank you for coming in and thank you for liking the live, Haas. Yes. Thank you for liking the live, y'all. All right. So we're also going to use the complete seasoning. And what's in the complete seasoning? Um, The complete seasoning. It's a flavor of like different herbs. It's like garlic. Um, you got parsley in here. You got um, rounded peppercorn. Um, so oh, it's, well. it, it's like a seasoning salt. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, I would say it's like a herbal seasoning salt. Like basically it got like almost all the herbs, not, not exactly all of them, but almost all the herbs mm -hmm. with like garlic powder and like salt. So I wouldn't say like seasoning, seasoning salt, but if you're looking for a, a all herbal complete seasoning salt, this is your go-to. It right. actually will save you a lot on, you know, mixing oreganos and Italian seasonings and all that stuff. If you want to use all of that, 
or you want a nice herbal herby taste to uh, your meat that that is perfect for it. Then we're gonna come in with a little bit more garlic powder because they don't have enough in that seasoning over there. <laughs> and then I'm gonna come in because I want just a slight bit of smoke flavor. I'm really not even using this for the color. I'm actually using it for the smoke this time. <laughs> hey, where can they find this recipe? They can find this recipe right now on foodtalktv.com. You can find the whole complete recipe that I'm making today right now. Just to say that Andrea's in the car on the way home listening to you instead of the radio. Oh, um, you know what? And that's and that's what I'm talking about. Because I mean, of course, this is exactly what you want to hear over your speaker. <laughs> you know, on your way home, instead of listening to your favorite song, I, you I listen to it. your favorite voice. Love it. And I, and I mess with that real hard. I mess with that very heavy. <laughs> so next, what we're going to do is we're going to take half a line and we're going to squeeze it. Wow, nice. Over the chicken here. Just half a line. Because we're going to make this citrus flavor. We're not trying to focus just on one acidy fruit. We're going to use a couple of them. I need to rinse my orange off first, and then we can use the orange. So half a navel orange, and you're going to squeeze that over the chicken. No, Khalil. No, I need the rest of that orange. Thank you. Uh, okay, you can get this orange. Here you go. Tell your daddy to go peel it for you. All right. Back to regular schedule program. <laughs> Then you're going to use a tablespoon of lemon juice. Thank you, uh, effing uh, Cajun cooking. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, his name is Hoss. I'm actually frying it. I'm going to be frying it, Andrea. Yeah, I guess I guess that because it said strips. I presumed you were going to fry them. I'll put them in an air fryer. Yes, fry, um, I'm, gonna fry, I'm actually going to bread these and fry them in some grease. Yeah. They look lush already. So yeah. you see them? They have that beautiful orangey red color to it. Oh yeah, my God. Yeah. And it smells delicious. And I'm actually surprised I didn't sneeze yet because maybe I'm not seasoning because y'all know. I say, you ain't seasoning if you ain't sneezing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I have my grease ready. I'm about to put these to the side for a second. And I'm going to start working on my potatoes because I really need to get them in the oven since they're kind of thick cut. So we're going to work on that right now. This is what we're going to call marinating. But tip, tip, uh, I would rather you do this at least for 30 minutes minimum, yeah. two okay. hours, preferably, but overnight as a maximum. So we're gonna put those to the side. And I'm gonna start getting everything that I need for the potatoes. Okay. Uh, uh, the user she cooks says that everything looks awesome. Everything sounds and reads awesome as well. Garlic, parmesan, yeah. potato, wedges. I mean it just yeah. sounds like wow. It's just wow. Oh, you know what? Uh just for a second here, um, uh, Yorkshire Indian, tell us about your show and when it comes on. Oh, thank you. Uh, so my show might hit different to uh, to the usual audience. So hopefully nobody gets offended. Um, it's um, it's like a, a slight comedy twist on Indian cooking. So Indian food, I specialize in Indian cuisine, which is getting quite prevalent now in the USA. Uh, in the UK, basically, it's second nature. It's part of British culture. Uh, obviously, in India, it's part of the culture. But in the USA, there are some kind of like a lot of signals that people are starting to get into certain types of Indian food. So I specialize in teaching people how to make, you know, the restaurants and takeaways that you go to to get your butter chicken or your, your bounty chicken or whatever. I specialize in teaching you how to do that style. I also do authentic, but I specialize in doing the restaurant takeaway style to help people to cook quicker at home 
uh, with fresh ingredients. End of. He's not even him, bro. Yes, that sounds amazing. I'm telling you, his channel is definitely something to see. So make sure that y'all follow him and watch oh, wow. him and learn some quick ways, learn some tips. You, like I said, you learn something new from everybody that you watch. Somebody is going live every day, all the time, Food Talk TV. And don't forget, you can also be a creator if you would like to. If this is something that you would like to do or think about doing, you can definitely join our agency. You can inbox me or you can inbox Gluten Free Mama Ann and see how we can get you into the agency. All you have to do is just go live and give you a chance to make some extra money. Now, so what I've done so far is I've oiled my sheet pan that I'm going to be putting my potatoes on. So I'm a pick up and go girl. Let me bring this back, okay? I'm a pick up and go girl. So I put my grocery orders in, I pick them up and I go home. Today, they gave me the wrong potatoes. Typically, oh. I would use rusted potatoes for this. I knew that was coming. I knew, as soon as you said I'm a pick up and go girl, I knew that uh, that you that you got the wrong item. I knew it. I got the wrong potato. They sent me the little bitty red potatoes. I do not know how they. Maybe they was out of the russet potatoes. I also put in my own substitution, so maybe they was out. You know, these days I don't know. The storage was empty for a while, so. Wow. I have an alternative. This is something that I already had in my freezer, which are thick cut steak fries, which I did right. not plan on using today, but it's going to it's going to give me what I need instead right, of those right, little okay. round red potatoes. So we're going to use the thick cut and replace of the russet potatoes that I would have used. Um, and I would have also chopped in slices, rough slices like this, but I would have kept the skin on because I love the skin on. So I'm still going to, so I'm still going to um, season these the way I was going to season them and still get them in the oven immediately. And then I'm going to start frying the chicken. I have my grease already hot um, on the stove. They will be ready to go. I'm gonna cut the chicken in strips afterwards. Right now we're letting them marinate. Uh, so let's go ahead and go into getting the season for these. So let's pretend that these are the rusted potatoes with the skin on. Not the golden potatoes, but the more brown potatoes that you got to scrub with a toothbrush to get all the dirt out the crevices. Those potatoes are the potatoes you want to use. <laughs> or you can use baking potatoes. They are, you know. So the potatoes that you got, can I, for the audience, why wouldn't they work? Would they be too sweet or? Oh, you know what? It's not that. They were, they're small and round. They're like right. this big okay. and round. The front, so yeah, you okay. won't get, you would get like slices like this. So to get the kind of want wedges. Yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah. where, when we do wedges, wedges are at least, they're even thicker than this, honestly. 100%. But they are right. sliced at a length. Yeah. So yeah. Again, that's yeah. why the red potatoes Again, yeah. wouldn't work. Now okay. I could have easily alternated the recipe with the red potatoes and did blocks. It would have took a little longer to cook in the oven and I possibly could have run out of time. So I just went with what would have gave me a closer um, look to, I guess the wedges that will also cook around the same amount of time. And those was these frozen stay fries that thank God I had in my freezer already. <laughs> I still think that's great though, you know, because there's there's like 95% of people that might not have the fresh potatoes, but will have some kind of frozen type in the freezer ready. So that's great that you're showing that. And you know what? I love the way you think because no matter what, there's always a positive side yeah. to everything. And maybe 100%. the universe was like, you don't need to cut your potato because maybe yeah. people don't want to cut your potatoes. The whole point was for this to be a quick meal to get you yeah. out the kitchen sooner. Exactly. So maybe you're right. That's what you're showing. I mean, that's what you're showing. You're showing the alternative and people will have these in the freezer. So why not use it? That's right. I like the way you think. So basically, let's do this. This is a way where you can take some frozen potatoes and turn them into gourmet potatoes. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> so y'all, I just went ahead and added the garlic on here. I have the garlic on the potatoes. I added some salt, I added some pepper. I'm just going to toss these around a little bit. I sprinkled olive oil over them and I sprinkled olive oil on wow. the foil. 
before I even added the potatoes, just so I don't really get all that sticky, sticky. So we're going to spread these out. I'm going to try to keep them as flat as possible on the pan. Not really overlapping because halfway through, I'm going to want to flip these to the other side. So I make sure that they get a nice, even crisp and baking coat on both sides. So I have my oven on 380, uh, 375. Sorry, I'm about to put these in the oven right now. Thank you for the gifts, going. Christine. And uh, thank you for all the comments, uh, Jacqueline. Uh, Jacqueline says that she loves quick meals, especially for busy moms and dads. Yes, yes, me too. <laughs> this is definitely one of those days, especially on hot days. It's like, as soon as I turn my oven on, it just alters the, the coolness of the house. <laughs> hey, so Karen doing, Snyder. What I'm doing now is I'm just taking the chicken thighs and I'm just cutting them into slices. I want the slices to be kind of as long, but also kind of, you know, as thick as possible. So I well, want to slice You're making chicken alone. strips. You're making chicken strips, so. I am you're making chicken strips, yes. Now you can take it. Sometimes I take the chicken thigh and I kind of cut it in half like that. And then I go the long way to cut them. And I'm telling you, you can slice them, but I'm saying, Sometimes just using those kitchen shears are a lifesaver and a time saver. They are an underrated kitchen tool. I think that they are an underrated kitchen tool. I really do. So Jacqueline says that she's going to use this recipe, but she's going to do tofu. She had asked earlier whether you could do this with tofu, and uh, Gluten-Free Mama Ann had answered her definitely. And yes, of course you can. Yeah. You can, you can do this with a uh, tofu or you can also do this with jackfruit. Oh, jackfruit. Okay. Yes. So if you do it with jackfruit, um, you will probably more cut it in nuggets than like strips since jackfruit, when you actually pull it out um, of the fruit is more like of a, like you're pulling it out of like a, I guess a nest or something is more round. <laughs> You know, I've never, I've never tasted jackfruit. Oh, you know what? Jackfruit, I've tasted it both ways. I tasted it as a meat, and I've tasted it as the fruit. It tastes just like uh, juicy fruit, the bubble gum, literally. And I oh. can sit there, and I can eat it, and I can eat it, and I can eat it in a health benefit. Um, and I've also tasted it as a meat. Now, it's not the most best-smelling thing when you use it as a meat because if i'm not mistaken you use jackfruit while it's uh while it's uh kind of unripe before you uh to turn it into a uh to a meat so it's not the best smelling thing but when it's actually real ripe and juicy it tastes so good it tastes just like juicy fruit like literally just like juicy fruit uh, taylor says that it takes on whatever flavors you add to it it tastes on whatever flavors you add to it. Okay, because yes. I um, it tastes just like juicy fruit. So I never had it. Okay. Those real, um, I guess you could say like yellowish, orangish colored. But I've had it when it was more of like a white type of color. Um, and uh, she cooks is saying that she loves her kitchen scissors. She uses them all the time. Makes things yeah. quicker. Yes, I have a couple of pair. I have like two pair for my home when I'm bake uh, cooking, and I also have like two pair for my for baking. I use them a lot too. <laughs> They're underrated. Like people be sitting here with all these knives trying to slice them. I'm, like, I'm about to cut this stuff up. I love cutting <laughs> paper. So I knew I was going to be using these uh, kitchen shears when I got them. <laughs> all right, y'all. So we got these chicken strips nice and sliced. I'm about to bread them now and we can get them over into the grease. So with this is just regular all-purpose flour, AP flour, and I've added some of the tropical saison, and I added some garlic powder, and just some salt and pepper. Not that much because we have enough seasoning on here. It's just just a just a little bit, just enough to kind of take that uh, floury taste off of it a little bit, just a little bit. So we're gonna dip them. You can also put it in a bowl. You can have flour on a plate and you can roll it around. You don't have to use flour. If you want to do them more naked style, 
you can just toss a little bit of cornstarch on top of them just so they get a nice like crisp or you can just fry them right out of the pan that will be up to you you do not have to bread them at all you can definitely fry these naked and they will still be just as delicious as if they was breaded you want to make sure that you have a nice even and thick coat just like this and then you'll be able to pop it in the grease so i want to do a grease test so normally what i do to do a grease test i take a pinch of flour Okay, I take a pinch of flour and I just put it on there. If it's sizzling, as soon as I put that touch of flour on top, then I already know that it's ready. Um, another thing you can do is you can just make sure that your grease is 350 degrees, 50 de uh, 350 degrees, good Lord. It's the heat. I don't know if it's the heat or what, but okay, so I'm at... You know, you know we have a, we have a follower... Um, uh, number shut up, Carlos. Whenever he comes on and we talk about grease, he tells us that uh, he can smell when it's 350 degrees. I definitely believe that. I believe um, that. You definitely I can. That. I definitely believe that. You can definitely smell it. Um, I, I smell that. it more with the uh, with peanut with peanut oil, and I smell it more with granola oil, which is what I have. I really don't smell it that much with vegetable oil. I'm not. I'm not really sure, but I definitely understand why he said that. You can. You can definitely smell it. I do. Yeah. I do. I go off a lot of my stuff being done, um, off of when I can smell it and how intense the smell is. So I definitely. I, I, I definitely yeah, you got I some you. amen from from the comments, including uh, your friend and. He yeah. says he can smell it too. I don't mind looking at it sometimes. I don't mind smelling it. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Oil. That looks fierce. Looks good. They're gonna cook in no time. Yes, exactly. That's the that's the point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the point. That is the point, Bobby. I'm trying to tell you. No time. <laughs> Yes, and then like um by like them not being like chicken breasts, them being chicken thighs because I like chicken thighs because they're they just have they they hold the flavor more. They have their own fat. Um, the flavor just sticks right to them, and then they're a lot easier and quicker to cook. You're when you fry them in strips. The the converted. I love breasts. chicken thighs. It's my go-to. Mm-hmm. Yes. Chicken thighs. I always tell everybody, chicken thighs, not chicken breast, chicken thighs. All my curries, I mean, breast calls for the great curry, but I just prefer chicken thighs all the all day long. Yes, like don't say you know though, if you gonna look, if you making something in the star of the show with chicken breast, don't invite me. Now I'm just, I'm just kidding, y'all. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, so we have that cooking right now so i'm going to do something special for y'all and today i'm going to make an ice cream now wow Ooh. it is a very simple like three ingredient ice cream that i'm going to be making for y'all today i actually see that i will have time all right my bacon racks <laughs> So I see that I will have time, so I have me a nice bowl. I would prefer use a glass bowl or use an aluminum bowl because it holds cold temperatures. Okay. We are going to be making a banana pudding ice cream today. Wow. Wow. Okay. Surprise. Yes, I didn't see this coming. Oh. Yes, banana pudding ice cream today, y'all. So typically I do a drink, and that's what everybody really be wanting to see. Now, with that being <laughs> said, you can add booze in here if you like. That is totally <laughs> up to you, and that is definitely something you can do. But since hey, I'm gonna be Walker, thank you for the gifts. Since I'm gonna be letting the kids eat this later. I am going to not put the booze in it. Or either I might put a little to the side and add some booze in it. <laughs> Fuck. 
for anybody that's watching, can I just say you've got to double tap the screen to like this for the for the extra bonus dessert. That's right. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a like. Even I'm gonna give it a double tap. That's for sure. Look, just it's that's easy. It's free. Just give it a double tap. It costs you nothing. Please give us a like. That'd be great. Thank yes, you. Uh, tap 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 those screens. Y'all yeah. know what to do. Make my day and give me the ten k, y'all. Make tap, my baby. day. Thank give you, Jacqueline. So it looks like a couple of these. Okay, this one is too big. It looks like a couple of the chicken is done already. Hey, I can Donna. Put these out. So I'm going to. So just like in the recipe that you can find right now on foodtalktv.com, you want to make sure that your chicken is golden brown are floating to the top. These are doing both. You see them all floated to the top? That's how you know that they're ready. Like I said, they don't take that long to cook at all. Look how perfectly golden brown they are. That you see that color from the season that's stuck on them. They have like this beautiful golden orange tint to them. They are just, woo. They looking and real uh, old. They looking let, real rated R over here. <laughs> okay, let, let me just throw, it, throw in a little uh, note there. When you're cooking chicken strips, it's so thin that the chicken cooks so quickly, all you're looking for is color. You're not, you don't have to pull out a thermometer and uh, shoot for 165 degrees. All you're looking for is color. And that is facts. You're looking for them to be a nice golden brown color. Those are not as brown as I want them to be, so I am keeping them in there. But you're looking for a nice golden brown color. Are you looking for them to be floating to the top? Now they're done because they're floating to the top. Now what I'm trying to get them to do is get that nice brown color on them like the like their siblings got over here. I'm going to add some more. And it is okay to add some more while you have some here cooking. They are going to stay floated at the top. You are definitely going to be able to tell exactly which pieces you need to pull. And actually, when you actually put the meat in the grease, you see how it starts to bubble back up you're basically helping the rest of those cook more. Connection problems. I think we paused for a second, didn't we, Bobby? Yeah, it's a connection okay. problems uh, from that side. I've had the uh, connection yeah. dots since, for a while now. Since, since we're good. She's probably going to come right back on. So, guys, you're watching Food Talk TV. You've got Vicki Brown on the screen. And she, her show is called Live from the 815. Comes on every single Friday, 4 Central. So, make sure that you follow us. Uh, and also hit the notification bell so that you know that whenever we go live, we go live every single day. And we have uh, Food Talk TV creators, FTTV creators that go live every single day, all the time. We probably have four creators live right at the same time right now. And so, Chad, what, what time am I on tomorrow for my live, uh, your time? You will be on it. Uh, you, you will be on right after Southern Serenity with, uh, with Ashton. And uh, you'll come on at 10 o'clock Central. 10 o'clock, okay. 10 o'clock Central, so uh, everybody will be awake. Yeah, just to let people know, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock Indian breakfast. Well, it won't be a breakfast, but anyway, it'll be Indian food. Okay, so I'm now I'm starting to worry that, uh, that she doesn't know that she's paused. Yeah, there were some uh, issues when I, when I joined. There was, uh, and you've got like a green and red dot. That's been flashing in the middle all the way through. Yeah, I thought it was my side, uh, but it isn't. Let's let's give her a call. I'm going to give her a call. Yeah. So because uh, a few people have kind of left the building, please yeah. stay on. Uh, give us some time. Uh, she's doing such a great job. Uh, let's hopefully give her a chance uh, to get back. She might she might not even know because I've done a lot of lives. What I didn't know there was an issue, 
and I found out like probably 10, 15 minutes later, unfortunately, <laughs> this is one of those things. Oh, yeah, okay. Definitely. I've got her voicemail. I know what happened. Her uh, her phone got too hot. That's happened to me. She probably doesn't even know it's frozen right now. And oh, if when fire. she realizes that it's not frozen or that it is frozen, she can't start it until it cools down. Been That's there, really unfortunately, surprise. done that. Let's see. Was I'm it too close to the fryer or? Yes. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've all done that uh, on Food yeah. Talk TV. We've all done that before. I don't know whether you have, but yeah, we've, especially with iPhones. iPhones are really sensitive that way. Yeah. Yeah. I've got an iPhone, so yeah, can be. Right. So I'm going to see what we can do here. That chicken looked bomb, but it didn't have any mustard. <laughs> we need, <laughs> we need more mustard. Come on. Oh my god. You're trying to start a fight with Taylor, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to actually in the live remotely, but <laughs> she missed that. Does mustard uh, really work? Absolutely. Mustard works with everything. Let's see. Hey. Oh, there she is. You know what? My phone overheated, y'all. My phone has, I actually got a new phone. Um, so I can take better pictures. I upgraded from my 11 to 14. So this is actually my first time using the 14. Wow. And, um, oh, hi. We, we <laughs> nailed it. We Thank nailed it, didn't so, we? We completely so, nailed it. We knew what happened. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Um, I didn't know that you was able to resume. So shout out to all 58 of y'all for holding it down and sticking around. Until I got back, because I know y'all was like, ain't no way she just popped off like that on us. Not talking about she finna make some banana pudding ice cream. She ain't getting away with it like that. <laughs> All right, you know, but But yeah. now, Vicky, I have the feeling that you're just going to pull some uh, pre-made out of the out of the uh, refrigerator, aren't you? Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. Uh, this, this entire thing was just a trick. Yeah. Oh, as as if I couldn't just do that anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but this is the thing, though. This is the this is the thing. Y'all are going to have to follow me to see the end the result of the ice cream. I can only show y'all the beginning, but I can't show y'all the end. So in like about three or four hours after they done had dinner and everything they will be uh tasting the ice cream so not only will i be um will you go live on your own channel i will go live on my own channel and i'm going to let the kids tell you how they like the ice cream because you know kids tell the truth yeah they do yeah especially yeah, Khalil. Do. if he don't like something he gonna say uh-uh he gonna say i don't like it i don't want it and then i'm just gonna uh cut that part out now i'm just cutting i'm just kidding y'all i'm just kidding all right so we are about to get into the ice cream now that y'all are going to see me make so if you see my page or if you follow me you already seen the peach cobbler ice cream that i've made oh um, that has internet going crazy for a short time so i am going to do a banana pudding one banana pudding. so it's some wow. simple ingredients I do in my bowl. Here we go. So simple ingredients. I'm telling y'all, this is probably be the easiest ice cream that y'all would ever make, honestly. And you can change this recipe up a lot of times, many different ways. And yes, yes, mustard queen. Yes. Um, I think it may be. Think, what 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 did you use? Did you use um? Heavy whipping cream and, and condensed milk for yours too. I think it's almost the yep, same. Yep, that, that, that's what she did. She And she yeah. used um, uh, she used heavy whipping cream. And for one, she used Cool Whip for the other. Oh, OK. 
okay, all right, cool whip. I knew it was so. It, it's still, it's basically the same. Basically, it's just gonna be heavy cream, um, added to mine instead of cool whip. But it's basically the same. That's basically it's basically the same because heavy cream makes whipped cream. So, so when you say heavy cream in America, is that the same as double cream in the UK? Double it cream. so good, thank you. <laughs> same thing. You know who we're missing here? Where's uh, Miss Gloria Brown in the comments? My mom is out in the streets. Um, Y'all, I, sometimes I feel like I'm the mom and she's like the teenager <laughs> or something because she be out here. Everybody is always talking about some no, no boy, no, no boiling or anything like that. I, I won't, I won't have to do any of that. Oh yeah, maybe I make banana pudding a lot. It's like one of my um popular cake items that people get sometimes. Uh, it's the banana pudding. So after this, we're gonna add. We added one cup of sweetened condensed milk. We're going to add two cups of heavy whipping cream. Go! Oh. Oh! <laughs> no. That's right, Christine. She said her mom was out in the streets. Same, the same way your daughters talk about you. Did she just say her <laughs> mom is out in the streets? Yeah, yeah, my mom is out in the street. She is. Yeah, <laughs> she's out here somewhere. She's always out. Like I always be like, I somebody always be like, I just saw your mom. I just saw your mama the other day, Vicky. <laughs> I just seen your mama in the store. I'd be like, everybody, everybody know my mama. <laughs> uh, she cooks. Asked, do you have to use bananas? Do I have this? to use bananas? Oh no, you do not have to use bananas at all. So, what I would tell you to use. Instead of using the regular vanilla jello, just use the banana cream and you will get the banana flavor. If you don't like the banana flavor at all, then just use the vanilla and it won't be a banana pudding, but you will have a vanilla pudding ice cream. Because I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I'm gonna have a Peter Griffin moment. It grinds my gears when someone calls banana pudding Oh, when somebody calls vanilla pudding, banana pudding, and they don't have banana flavor or bananas in it. Because <laughs> at that point in time, it is literally vanilla pudding. <laughs> yes. And don't get me wrong. I'm not a fan of bananas either, but I like banana pudding. I would eat around the bananas. But uh, today I'm adding the bananas in today because the kids, they love bananas. I have like three bunches of bananas right now and they will probably be gone by um sunday or monday <laughs> they eat these bananas all right they're gonna turn into a banana and i told them i'm gonna start playing banana in pajamas for them who was who is in my age frame that remembers bananas in pajamas <laughs> yeah. Come on, give me some likes if you like banana and pajamas. I know I am not the only one. Oh, I'm looking for my piece. I don't have my base. I'm wondering why that's not working because I don't have my base, y'all. It's all right. Okay. I'm going to blame it on the heat. We always going to blame it on something, but today we're going to blame it on the heat. All right. Billy so, Bean says banana cream ice cream or banana cream ice cream is the best. Yes, banana cream ice cream. I'm pretty sure that is super duper bomb. So right here, we have one can of sweetened condensed milk, two cups of heavy whipping cream, and we have like half a pack of the, is this the six ounce? Half a pack of the five ounce vanilla jello. Where is this lady talking from? <laughs> She's I'm live from 815. <laughs> Probably Jolly and a little bit of uh, Gloria, Mississippi stuff is up in me. <laughs> so now we are just going to blend this up. Just make sure you blend it up real good. Well incorporated, y'all. Well incorporated. Good. I might put it on turbo real quick. You do not have to 
You do not have to whip it until it turns into peach or it turns into um, a whipped cream. You do not have to do that. You just need to make sure that it's well incorporated until you start to just see a little bit of bubbles in the pan. Just a little bit of bubbles. But you do okay. not have to whip it until it's uh, or until it's so they start to have stiff peaks or anything like that. No, it can be nice and creamy just like this. Matter of fact, I prefer it be creamy because it just gives you like a creamy or smooth scoop. Um, I didn't add the vanilla, so now I have to add the vanilla, which I normally do two capfuls, which is about a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon, depending on the size of the cat. Then I need to blend that in. What I always say is that whatever the recipe calls for, for vanilla, it, all you have to do is double it, and it's almost right. Oh, yeah. This one's strong vanilla, right vanilla flavor right here. I love this vanilla flavor. I don't use too much of it. It lasts long, and it's actually non-expensive, and I get it from Wally World or Walmart. So I'm going to pour this over. And I want to pour it over into a pan, preferably glass or aluminum, just so it's kind of like a, I don't know, I guess you can say a convection cooling system here, where it's going to like evenly cool all the way around. You know what? That actually got pretty thick very quickly. Yeah. It's supposed to, yeah. It's not supposed to be until it whips up into peaks. It's just supposed to be a nice cream. It's just you guys, ice cream. You're watching so, Food Talk TV. Give us a follow. Uh, also, hit the notification bell so that you know that when we go live, we go live every single day uh, with a cooking demonstration. And we are live with our uh, other creators all the time, every day. I just looked on my computer and I see we have three other creators live at the same time. Uh, they do everything from battling to, uh, to trivia. Uh, to just talking and and, uh, and being friends. So I'm not going to add banana all the way through it. I'm going to put the banana on top. Nice kind of like thin like slices. Because like I said, I'm really not a fan of banana. But I do like banana pudding. What's going on my free? Oh. Okay. So I do like banana pudding. So more thin type of slices. Slice them over the top. As you see, it's gonna hold them. Yeah, that is a, that cream did come out uh, very yeah, thick, very quickly. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah. I love heavy cream. Um, certain brands actually whip a lot faster. And I mean, like, if you get like a, I ain't gonna lie, like Mayers have their, their, um, Myers, their act, their homemade, or I guess store brand heavy whipping cream is really like the best though. I'm not gonna lie. It whips up yep. so quick. It's, it won't even take you five minutes at all, really. Um, the thing that helped this whip up is the Jello that got the gelatin in it and everything kind of help it whip up a lot faster. But this is like my second favorite if that I get it from Jules or it will be Albertson uh, where someone else is. And then I'm going to take my Nilla wafers. You can do Nilla wafers. You can do chessmen cookies. I mean, you know, I don't want to upset my grandmother or anything like that. I don't want her looking down on me like, child, you know, I don't use no chessmen. I don't use no, you know, butter cookies <laughs> in my banana pudding. So I'm just going to keep it the way intended it to be Sorry, and i'm just going to use my Billy 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 saying she loves bananas yeah. uh, when can we get your recipe dear so the recipe can be on foodtoptv.com so right? i did announce anybody who was on my facebook page this morning i did announce that i would be making this only if i had time which i did i tried to make sure i had time so i did a little bit more prepping um earlier now, I, I will not be doing a recipe card for this, 
This what? is a live exclusive recipe only. If you want to get this recipe, you will have to rewatch the live on YouTube or Facebook in order to get this recipe. This one will not be on Food Talk, but the potatoes and the chicken is on Food Talk. So now right. this is going to go into the freezer just like this. When you give a nice scoop, which I will also be doing a video for a live for. So follow me. So tomorrow when they dip into this or later tonight, when they dip into this and the kids get a review, you will know exactly how good this banana pudding is. But make sure you go on YouTube and you follow us and like us on YouTube and subscribe to us on YouTube. So you can get this exclusive banana pudding food talk TV exclusive. Only you have to rewatch the video in order to get this recipe. So make sure. Can I just ask you the, the knee? Is it Neela? Because it's it's backwards to us. Is that like a rusk or is it a biscuit? What is, what is it? A uh, vanilla wafer is kind of like a is it wafer. It's like a vanilla cookie crisp. But, I guess like a, a cookie, a crisp cookie. Right, it's okay. like a vanilla crisp cookie. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say that it's a shortbread. I wouldn't say that it's an actual like light wafer. A vanilla wafer is kind of like something of its own. Right. Okay. But it tastes like a crispy vanilla cookie. Right, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so... I can take these potatoes out. They are looking beautiful. Charlie Brown says that chessmen are better. I think that would be arguable. I like vanilla wafers. You know what? The vanilla wafers bring a different flavor. Like I said, they're a different kind of their own. You know, chessmen cookies, you can... You can buy the, what are they called, Leo, Le, Leora, Leanne cookies, or whatever they call. You can get those, and they taste just like chestnuts. You know, like when the, the vanilla wafers bring a different flavor. Even if I use chestnuts, I still use vanilla wafers in the recipe as well. If you want shortbread pudding, then, you know, just make shortbread pudding. But that's not, that's not banana pudding to me. That's shortbread pudding. Yes. Yeah, uh, actually, Charlie Brown agrees. He says the same thing. They're uh, they're shortbread. And Billy B says, Nella is the classic. That's what I grew up on. And I think that your sound just went out. Yeah. They do look like a rusk. Vicky, we don't hear you. Oh, thought I heard something. No. There we go. So the chicken tenders. We have the we have the melted butter here going on. Hi Ashton Poo. How are you doing today? So the butter is melted. I'm going to add just a little bit of seasoning to it. I'm going to do half a lime. In the melted butter. I am going by to do a little bit of Parmesan cheese. By the way, everybody, um, Ashton is in. She will be on tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning. And then right after, well, an hour after her will be uh, Yorkshire Indian, who's in that box just below me. Hi, Ashton. How are you? Thank you for the gifts. I just added two tablespoons of garlic, minced garlic, and we just have a little bit of fresh parsley. We're going to mix this until it is well incorporated. You can just move it around in a bowl, toss it in a bowl just like that until it's well incorporated. So again, this is one stick of melted butter. This is about one fourth cup of grated parmesan two tablespoons of minced garlic 
a little bit of garlic powder, which I didn't want to forget, and some fresh parsley. And we're just tossing that around and we're going to toss our chicken strips into this. I'm putting them off. So we're just gonna take them. So Jay is, them. Jay is asking uh, what you're making right now. So right now I am doing some chicken thigh chicken strips and I fried them and I just tossed them into a garlic and Parmesan butter. And right now I'm going to plate them. Mom, what you doing? Originally, you would like to look at that. Ooh, wait. Yeah, that looks Originally, good. Originally, you would like to um, toss these as soon as you take them out the grease. But I really, really wanted to give enough time to make that exclusive banana pudding ice cream that you will not get a recipe card for on TikTok TV, but you will have to go and subscribe on YouTube to Food Talk TV um that food talk tv on youtube in order to see that actual recipe oh a, gloria brown is in the house what i've been waiting waiting all hour for gloria to show up there she is <laughs> she is here she is fashionably late too y'all y'all just share she got this pretty outfit on she done left she left her keys in the door she was trying to hurry up and get back to watch it <laughs> no, literally, Ma, you left your keys in the door. <laughs> your keys are sticking in the door. I know, I've been trying to get out since four. <laughs> She's been having trouble. So, this is then when you toss them directly out the pot. You can just hear them sizzling in the butter. You toss them around. And they come out just stuck, just butter, just just butter and garlic, just just dripping off them, just stuck to them, Lord. Yes. Okay. I get in it for a second sometimes, y'all, because it smells so good. All yeah, right. So good. next, we're going to do our potatoes. Look, this is okay. There we go. We're going to do our potatoes basically the same way. It's also going to be butter, stick of butter, about one fourth cup of grade um, of Parmesan cheese, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of complete season, but we want them to have more of an herby taste, and we're going to add some pepper into this one. So it's almost the same, almost, just a little bit different. I'm gonna stir that up. You even get a different color from it. Yes. Add some fresh parsley. And we're going to take these out the oven and we're going to toss them immediately. So they are nice and golden. And uh, what temperature did you put the put your oven at? I put the oven at three seventy five, and they cook for about about thirty five minutes. Okay. Now you will want to use the rusted potatoes, as I stated earlier, y'all. They gave me the wrong potatoes with my order, but um, you will want to use the rusted potatoes, or you can use the the big bacon potatoes. Um to cut into wedges. And we're just gonna toss these around too. You guys, uh, we also, because we have cooks uh, like Ashton and Yorkshire Indian who are in uh, in Europe, uh, we have a temperature conversion chart on foodtalktv.com. So if you hear them say uh, 200 and that sounds low, it's not really 200, it's gonna be 200 Celsius. Oh, yeah, I never thought about, I never thought about that. It is, the metrics is different. Huh. Maybe I should try to think about that when I type my recipe. 
No, no, no. Uh, FoodTalkTV.com does have a com uh, conversion chart there. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So good. I tell you. You said tomato. You I'm said actually tomato. surprised how good they came out, even though um, I had to use like frozen potatoes. But I be dead. I mean, good lord. <laughs> These this things are okay. good. I don't want to tell you. All right, y'all. So we have our potatoes. We have our chicken. I'm telling you, this is a very fun, easy, quick meal. Even if you don't want to be in the kitchen by yourself, you could bring the kids in and they can help you with this. They will have fun tossing the chicken in the butter sauce. You can use and you can toss them in any type of sauce you would like. Um, they will have a lot of fun tossing them into the butter sauce. You can tweak the recipe however you like. And what I'm telling you, when you make the recipe, tag us. Tag Food Talk TV. We want to see what your dishes look like when you make our recipes. Tag us in these. I'm gonna try this chicken. Oh, you know what, uh, Vicky? Uh, I've got a little announcement before you go. Okay. Uh, Yorkshire Indian will have his first show on tomorrow, and the recipe uh, that he's going to be making already up on Food Talk TV. So, if you want to get the ingredients and follow along with him, uh, just go to Food Talk TV. And look and look for his recipe at our uh, blog. It's called In the Kitchen. And I'll be using chicken thighs. Oh, chicken back, chicken back, <laughs> rather than breast. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to be there for that. I'm gonna have to check that out. Anytime. Look, y'all. No. I'm trying to tell y'all. We have new people going on. We are expanding. We are growing, and we thank y'all for taking y'all time out to watch every last one of us. These are some amazing chefs. When I tell you amazing, I'm talking about amazing. They are so talented. It's ridiculous. Sometimes I, sometimes I want to shake them and be like, do you understand how talented you are? But anyways, so we got the potato fries. We had a chicken. This recipe is up right now on Food Talk TV. We have the banana pudding ice cream, which... Won't take long to chill. It'll probably take about two to three hours. As you see, it's already chilling. It's already kind of more solid than it was. It's not even moving and shaking around. That's why I say there's no need to over mix your, your over mix it. You don't have to mix it until it becomes a stiff peak. It's going to stiffen up on itself. I didn't even have to do that. It's doing it on its own. This is going to go in the freezer. If you want the recipe for this, go to subscribe on YouTube. Go to Food Talk. TV on YouTube and hit the subscribe button. Once this live goes up, that is the only place you will get the recipe for. So make your way over there on YouTube for this once in a lifetime food talk TV exclusive, but not a good ice cream recipe. <laughs> right Fridays and y'all will get to see me shake it up for y'all much love and bye have a wonderful weekend bye, bye guys bye.